One of the things that I can really relate to uh, at Charleston and the art that was produced there was their love of the pond, the lake, as uh, Vanessa called it, when she described the surroundings to Duncan before he'd arrived. He was rather shocked to find that it was a pond. This is a really important picture because it's arguably the first that Vanessa did when she arrived at their idyllic farmhouse. But at this point in her career, she is drenched in the excitement and challenge of modernism, of playing with colours, shapes and design. And that's what you get here. And look at the way that she's just made the colours almost arbitrary, the orange mountains, the yellow grass, and those fabulous post-impressionist strokes in the bushes. Now, keeping to the theme of water, I want you to compare it with something that Duncan did of the pond 30 years later, which is here. This is about 1945, and uh, around this point, it's quite clear that Duncan was in love with this new possibility of colour, which was basically acid green. I mean, it's so strong. Look how Duncan has played with the water. So although the upper part of the picture is reasonably solid, he's allowed it to excitingly dissolve those little post-impressionist strokes around the duck, those fabulously contrasting colours, almost like blocks. So what he's doing is, in this instance, using the water just to, to say something different. And if you speak to landscapists, they'll often tell you the, the utter delight of being able to introduce into a rural view the reflective beauty of water. And this is what we're seeing here in both instances. And it's about how Duncan and Vanessa, in the folds of the English countryside in Sussex, were able to find around them all the component parts, the muse, as we've called it, for their endlessly satisfying art.